Hey there, and welcome back to another show. And I do apologize, running a little bit late today. Oh, and camera. No, camera. Camera. Camera, want to behave? No. Okay. All right. I apologize about that. So, let's get started. What are we going to, to look at today? So what I want to, to look at today is kind of continuing where we, we left off last time. And like some of the things that we, we were looking at, we've been building out this API and, and there's like a full you know, playlist of the previous show. But we looked at JSON validation. Now, one of the things that I want to start to kind of cover this time is looking at documentation because Documentating, documentating, I think I've just created a new word there. Documenting an API is, is really, really useful. It, it's useful for your own consumption, but you know, it's, it's kind of also useful for other people. The key thing about building microservices is that you're going to have a lot of them. And a lot of people are going to be coming and asking you saying, Hey, how does this work? Where's the docs? I've been trying to look through the source code and I don't understand it because it's Go and I'm a JavaScript front end developer. So you can do yourself a favor and just kind of take a good approach of, of uh, documenting things. So Swagger kind of is, is I suppose, the, the, the open API spec, um, which, which the industry seems to have settled around for RESTful APIs. Um, and, and it's a pretty nice tool. What we are going to look at is how we can start using Swagger with our um, with our existing sort of API and using Go Swagger. Because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to add my documentation to my Go code and for it to be automatically generated. And that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look. Let me just zoom that up for you. Maybe not that much. Okay, so what we um, what we have is is our our API that we've been working on for the, the the last sort of few last few weeks there, and um, we've we've started to set out these routes, and we want to now be be looking at how we can we can document this. So we use Go Swagger. And the, the nice thing about Go Swagger is that Go Swagger is going to allow us to, to generate kind of all of this code from, from within our API. So let's take a look. Well, let's have a look at the entry point. So what we want to be able to do is we want to kind of write some very sort of top level documentation for, for our API. So we can add the documentation to, to our handlers. And let me just quickly fly over to the top level docs here. And we'll find that somewhere. We're looking for the package docs. Uh, yeah, and of course. There we go. So we, we, we kind of have this top level documentation and this is kind of letting people know what is the intention of the service. It also is setting out some things like, are we going to be using an HTTP scheme, an HTTPS scheme, some contact information so that they know where to file bug reports and, and some basic kind of stuff um, around the kind of the, the inputs and the outputs of the system. Are you going to be using gzip potentially, JSON, XML, whatever that, that, that could be. And you can also define the, the, the sort of security elements of this. So, you know, anything that's covered within the, the Swagger spec, we can, we can put it in here. We don't have any security yet in this API. We'll be looking at security um, in just a, a, a sort of a few episodes time. But, but first, let's, let's kind of add that top level documentation and we can at least just kind of get things generating. So we're using this, um, the, the documentation Go Docs, uh, the Go Docs stuff. So we're doing classification of product API. 
Okay. And then we're going to kind of just say documentation for product API. So we will set the, the schemes. So not spelling it like that, we won't. And we're going to set that to HTTP. And we're going to set the, the base path. So the other useful thing about setting out your, your documentation using the, the Swagger sort of format is you can actually also use Swagger to generate clients. So if somebody is, let's say, building a Ruby integration to your microservice, then what they can do is they can actually consume your Swagger definition and they can use that to auto code gen themselves an API. Of course, in Go, you could uh, use your Swagger spec as well to, to code gen a, an API client that, that other people could consume as just a package. But um, we're, we're just setting out these basic details. So we're just saying that the base path is, is just slash. The, the, the version, well, we're just on version one, is it consumes. So this API only interacts with application JSON. It's JSON in, JSON out. So application JSON, and what does it produce? Well, same thing, JSON. So, whoops, really can't type today. So we're gonna set that out like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're using the the swagger meta tag and that's just going to give the the go swagger uh, library a chance to be able to generate our docs so to generate the docs we're actually going to use the the go swagger tool so rather than kind of running that every time we'll, we'll have that as part of our, our ci flow um, and what i kind of like to do is is add stuff like this to a make file so rather than having kind of all of these random sort of commands that only you know about in your head, put them in a make file and, and then you can document them in the readme, make it easy for other folks to, to be able to consume your stuff. So what I, I want to be able to do is I'm gonna use the, 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 the Go Swagger tool and um, it's literally just Swagger generate. So let, let's create a an item in the make file and what you call them, recipes, make, build config things, swagger, okay? And this is going to, we're gonna switch um, go module off as per the docs. And we're gonna run swagger, generate, spec. And then where do we wanna generate the spec to? Well, I'm just gonna put it in the root and I'm gonna say swagger.yaml. And then I'm putting the um, scan models. And what that's gonna do is that's also gonna be able to um, run through and build my, my documentation for, for mo my models that I'll define. And all of that will be a little clearer in a little while, but let's just first, let's just see that run. So I've because I've got that, I can now just do make swagger. So that's running and you can see there, that it's generated me a swagger file and you see so that documentation that i put on my api has generated this start of my swagger document which is really nice so of course let me just prove that that i'm i've got no smoke and mirrors because honestly it's going to take me longer to do smoke and mirrors than it is just code this like first time but you see the difference there i've just made that change so we've, we've got that running. Um, where do you install Swagger from? I hear you cry. Well, you can just use a, a simple um, go get. So again, we're, we can just do go 111 modules off, um, go get, and it's just dash u github.com slash go swagger go swagger 
command swagger. So we can just do it like this and we can call this install. Right. So if you um, if we just quickly bounce over to that URL now we'll put all of these these URLs into the the description but it's a really nice project and the I was looking at the documentation there which is in the project um, but you can have a look at the repo again everything's nice and written in go so and it's all well maintained last commit there 12 days ago so one one kind of nice thing that we can do with this in our, our make is why don't we call this um, check install and then rather than just kind of running this what we can say is we can say which swagger and what uh, what the which command does is it it'll basically check to see if there's an existence of a command on your on your Unix system work on a Mac as well and if it doesn't exist then what we're going to do is we're going to run the go get so then in my my make file I can just have a, a nice single line make swagger and that will check the install and install the tool if I need it as well all right so we we're, we're doing all right we've got our kind of very basic scaffolding running. So the question is now, how do we, how do we start sort of documenting these APIs? So what we, what we can do is we can start to, to kind of run through and we can start adding the, the documentation elements for each of the, the APIs, right? So we're going to use again more more sort of go doc. But the nice thing about this is that I can put this in with my my actual um, API documentation itself. So let's say we're going to say get products returns the the API. And then what I can do is I can define my my swagger root. So I'm going to say adding a comment swagger root verb which is going to be get the ul path uri path url product and well what is it going to do well it's, it's kind of the name i suppose or the, the sorry the the grouping so products and the the name so we're gonna we're not calling it get products we're calling it list products we're gonna kind of take a more of a, a controller based approach that's what we want to call it in our documentation because it's gonna be different from what we we call it in our in our code base so we can we can define that and then we can say well what does it do well it returns a list of products nice and easy so if we if we kind of just generate um, generate that, then you can see that we've now got this path element, but we're not we're not quite done yet because we want to add a little bit more information to this. We need we need something you know a little bit richer than 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 we just have here because what we can um, we can do is we can do things like well what does it um, what are the responses? So I can give a hint and I can say responses and it returns a 200 and that is going to have a, um, a list of, of products. So I can say, okay, products response. Oops, and that needs to be a comment as well. So, so this is kind of nice. So I can actually define the, the list of, um, of objects. So this product response is actually a, a strut inside of your, your documentation. And it, it's, not, it's not going to be directly the, um, the product, you know, just the list of products. We, we kind of need to add a little bit of um, finesse and some more documentation onto that. So it's, you know, it's, you're not direct, but it's still pretty pretty easy going 
So let me just close down some, some of these files and get them out of my way. So let's add that. So we've got our, our product API here and we can add some, some documentation. So I'm going to define a type. I'm going to call it products response. I'm not actually going to use this. I'm literally only using it for, for my documentation. But um, I can define like a body here and I can say data, which is going to be a slice, data dot product. So like everything else, I add my, my documentation. So I can say, um, well, a list of products. Okay. And what I can then do is I can add, you know, some more, more document, all uh, some documentation that's going to appear in my Swagger doc. So all products in the system. And then again, what I'm going to be doing is I'm using this um, metadata. So if I kind of look at all of this documentation and, and you've got to kind of look at all of the specification here on Go Swagger, but a response object has an annotation of in, so where to find the field. So this can be in the body or it could be in the path or it could be in you know, something else. Um, but, but this is quite, quite nice because we, we get to kind of define this and I'm not going to do stuff like this because I'm going to show you how we can annotate our models, but you've got the ability to kind of write really, really rich sort of documentation and you literally get out what you put into this. So it's, it's worthwhile spending a little bit of time, but anyway, in body. All right, let's run our documentation again. And what have we got now? This is nice, right? So now we can see that we've got a response. It says it's going to do a 200. It's going to return a response products. So we are, we're kind of really, um, really starting to, to get somewhere. But if you look, well, it's defined as a response here, but I haven't got the actual object. And that's because, again, I can't just define it like this. I've got to be using those um, Swagger meta documentation tags. So I'm going to say Swagger response. And then I give it its name, product response. Generate my docs again. Okay. And you see that now it's pulled in all of that object from from my data package and it's automatically added it to my swagger documentation i haven't had to do anything on this it's literally just pulled it in all because i've defined this this wrapper for for my my documentation and this is really cool i'm getting somewhere right so i've now got in pretty quickly i think this sort of documentation that's starting to, to build up. But wouldn't it be nice if I could serve this documentation? You reckon? I think it would. I think it'd be pretty sweet. So what if I was to add the documentation to my actual API itself and give it a kind of a nice, rich UI? Swag so can do that too. So what we can do is we can add a docs handler and we're going to use some special middleware. So I'm going to say, um, well, it's going to be on get. So it's going to be the, um, what did I call this? The get router. And we're going to do handle. And we're just going to add the docs path. And what I want to do is add a, a special handler here. Right. I'm going to, what's, where do I get that handler from? Well, I'm going to use uh, Redox. 
So Redox actually has a handler for serving my my Swagger spec directly from my Go code, which is 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 pretty um, pretty amazing. And you get this really nice rich UI. So I can just use their middleware, and I can automatically add this this to my UI. So it's making things really easy for folks. So that's going to be in the the package, um, the Redoc middleware package. So first to use that, what I need to do is I just need to specify some options. So let's add middleware dot re and doc opts. So in the Redoc opts, I've got a, um, a bunch of stuff that I can specify in here, but I'm just going to specify my spec URL, and that's because the, the base spec URL is not going to be looking for a YAML, it's going to be looking for a JSON. And I just want to change that to YAML. And then I can actually define my, my middleware. So I'm just going to say middleware.redoc with the options. Okay, right. So we do we do that. So that's going to live in the uh, the redoc middleware package, which you can find at. Let me just open up a web browser here. We can get it in GitHub.com slash, and it's in Go Open API runtime. Middleware. So the Go Open API runtime has a package which has got the capability to, to do this documentation. So we've got this middleware, which is going to be allow us to present that, that redoc. And again, I'll, I'll stick the link in there. But the nice thing about building a lot of stuff in Go is if you know which packages to use, you can build some stuff out really, really quite quickly. All right, so I'm just going to add, whoops, not like that I want. Let me add that package. So now what I want to be able to do is to be able to serve my docs. So that should be enough kinda, but let me show you just why only kinda. Go run main.go. Undefined opt, okay, typo, fantastic. All right, so this is now running. So now if I go to localhost and 1990 docs, Oh, well, we're kind of nearly there, but well, that looks a bit broken, right? So let's have a look at why that is. So the reason is that it says error downloading localhost 1990 swagger, because what, what the Redoc website is, it's a, um, well, it's a JavaScript based website. I don't know if it uses React or, or whatever, but um, it's, it's JavaScript based. So the browser is actually attempting to download the Swagger file from my server itself. But, well, my server itself is not serving that file yet. But that's easy enough to fix. So in Go, you've got the, the concept of uh, a built-in file server. And we've I don't believe we've looked at um, serving files yet. I'm going to kind of save that for probably the next show where I want to talk a little bit about um, serving files and gzipping and stuff like that. But it, it, it exists. <clears throat> so we have um, that, that router. And what we can do is we can just write another handle. So I'm going to do get router dot handle. And then what's the path going to be? Well, the path is going to be our... Um, our swagger file, so swagger.yaml. So remember when, when you're adding the, the roots, the roots are all going to be 
you know, that, that kind of absolute. So what, when somebody requests swagger.yaml, what do we want to happen? Well, we, we kind of just want to redirect that at um, a file server. So I can just say HTTP dot file server and HTTP dot directory dot slash. Let me just run that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll explain what's going on in there. All right, so first things first, we now have our swagger because we've literally, with that one line of code, just added a basic file serving capability to our Go API. But now with our swagger docs, look at that. We've now got our UI. And this again is, this is built into the, the URL that we were just, just looking at earlier on, which is, I think, pretty cool. So how did we how did we do that? So how did we serve that that swagger file? Well, what we did was we we kind of we added a new handler, and the handler is pathing path, is looking explicitly for this file. So HTTP file server. If we, we look at this, what it is, is it's a special handler which is built into the Go HTTP package for serving file requests. So what this is, is going to do is it's going to look for the file path that comes in. So in this instance, swagger.yaml in the given directory. So the directory that you are specifying, I'm using this HTTP DIR, and that's the path. So that's my current working folder because that's where my swagger.yaml lives. And the file server is then going to look for swagger.yaml inside of this HTTP DIR. If it finds it, it'll serve it. If it doesn't, then it'll bounce it. And really, really is that quite, really, really simple. When you're serving large files in Go, and, and this is one of the things that I'm going to look at in the next video, you want to be looking at things like gzipping as well. Because if you're sending a large file over the internet, if you gzip it, it's going to reduce the amount of bandwidth and it's going to actually speed up. The core problem isn't zipping in terms of time, it's really going to be data transfer. So the smaller those files, the quicker your web server is actually going to be. And we're going to look at that in the the next episode. I think what I'm going to do is we'll look at that. We're going to tidy up a couple of little bits and pieces, but um, we're, we're kind of, we're getting through there, but back to this. So there we go, right? We've got a get API. What about, well, what about something which, which kind of takes a, a file parameter? So let's say the delete method. If you look here, our delete method has an API parameter in the in the, the URI path, which is the name, or sorry, the, the ID of the item that we want to delete. Well, we can kind of add that really, really sort of um, simply as well. So let's... Um, Let's take a look. So how do we how do we define that? Again, what I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of I'm just separating things up a little bit, but I'm going to add my annotation again onto onto here. It's going to be very very similar. And in fact, you know, I'm going to do what everybody should do, which is cut and paste. So my swagger root, remember that metadata, and again, let's just bounce quickly over into the docs. I wanna just show you, show you that. Swagger meta, all of these different sort of elements here, and then root. So swagger root has all of these various different um, properties that you can set and various different patterns and things like that. 
and the, the documentation is excellent. You'll find all of the examples and things like that in there. But we we need to add that. All right, so we're doing swagger root. It is delete. And it is products slash ID. And we can specify the parameter ID somewhere else. And we'll we'll take a look at how we're going to do that in the moment. But at the moment, this is going to be delete product. So it's still in our products group. The name of it we're going to call delete products. And well, if it's successful, it's just going to return no content. And uh, let me just quickly update that. Delete products return. Oh no, it does not deletes a product from the database. Okay, I'm just going to tidy that up. So we need to define two more of those wrappers, if you remember. So we need to define one for the ID and we need to define one for this no comment content. So I'm putting kind of any of those sort of generic elements because you, you probably find you'll reuse them time and time again. I'm just putting them in my this products file here where I know where I can um, where I can find them. So the ID first. So how do I add a, a parameter? So it is swagger parameter. And let's again just quickly look over at the documentation for parameter. And you can see you, you're kind of starting to get used to this convention, I think. But we can kind of see where the parameter is going to be. You can specify maximum values for it, a pattern in case it's a string. So we could kind of use a regular expression. Um, if it's got a number of items, you know, it, it's very, 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 very flexible. And we can do some some really, really nice things. Again, the, the kind of the nice thing around this is when you're kind of code genning. It's just going to make things really, really easy, but it also makes it very clear in terms of the documentation. So swagger parameter. Which parameter is it? Well, it's a, let's call it, um, I don't know, delete product. Yeah. I suppose it was generic. We could, we could, uh, we could call it something more, but, um, delete product. Okay. So what is the delete product parameter? Well, again, we're going to just define a, a type. So we're going to say type, we're going to say product ID. Whoops. ID parameter wrapper struct and we'll we'll kind of um, look at that we're going to put that in now is it going to be in body no in path okay is it required yes because if you are going to be deleting an item, you've got to have the, the, the product ID. Require, 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 I read. All right. And then we can define the type. So it's going to be called, and we're just going to say JSON ID, whatever, doesn't really matter. But this is um, our, our parameter wrapper. So what is the, the name here? Yeah, we can add this description so we can say the ID of the product to delete from the database. Again, in path, blah, blah. So, sorry, I made a, um, I think I made a mistake earlier on. I was saying that what we're gonna call this, this isn't the name, sorry. This is the function to which it, it relates. So if we look over here, we created this root and we called it delete product. So for the parameter ID, 
I'm referencing it here. So I'm just doing this cross-referencing and I could have multiple of these um, annotations if I was using the product in, in more than one, one location. But, you know, we're, we're kind of getting there. So I'm going to leave my server running and I'm just going to generate my, my swagger again. Uh, what do we got? So swagger, uh, well, yeah, it's, um, par, um, where did I make that typo? Unknown annotation. Well, yeah, parameters. I did say this show was warts and all, didn't I? I could make it perfect, but who doesn't make mistakes? I certainly make plenty. Uh, what do we got? Oh, well, we got an error because we haven't defined no content. Because again, we, we've kind of, we're making these references, but for the documentation to work, we kind of need to kind of define all of these sub documentation bits. You know, it, it may fi feel like it's a little bit of a, a sort of a, a chore for you, but, um, it's always the keyboard, but you're absolutely right. Um, it may feel like a little bit of a chore, but honestly, once you kind of get a lot of this stuff set up, it, it moves along really, really, really quickly. So let's just add our no content wrapper. And we're just going to say type product no content strut. Um, and we're going to say swagger response uh gosh no content well it has no content because it has no body um so let's just generate that again and we'll we'll just quickly bounce over here and then refresh that and then we can see that we're kind of getting getting all of this sort of documentation and it's it's really starting to kind of richly um richly be defined, which, which I think's really nice. So I'm pretty much done. I don't want to go through and do all of these elements, um, because it'll bore you to death. But what I am going to do is I will, as always have the source code in the link below, and I will upload everything at the end of the show. So it'll be, it'll be available in about an hour or so. Um, and what I just want to show you before I disappear is annotation of some some objects in a little bit more more sort of depth because you know it's it's all well and good here we've got this product and it's kind of annotated well it's annotated okay we can kind of see some response schema and stuff but there's no real rich description around it we can add all of those rich descriptions by using the model tag. And the model tag allows us to, to kind of really put a lot of definition around our objects. So we, you know, we, what we looked at validation in the previous um, episode, we can actually describe the validation elements that are going to be required for, for the user by, by using the, the, the swagger model. Let's um, let's quickly take a look at how we can we can do that for our product. So I'm I've been on the fence here, and and I was like, I've got this data block, and it has a product, and do I really want to be adding Swagger metadata? It feels like. You know, it feels muddy. I've got Swagger docs inside my product and I've got them in my handlers. Um, and I can, came to peace to it. I was just, you know, I don't really feel like I like it much, but at the same time, it doesn't really bother me. I don't find it, it that intrusive. In fact, in some ways, the documentation, even though it's Swagger specific, can help with uh, the sort of the general readability. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use Swagger model. So again, it's all about that metadata. 
And then to, to kind of validate each of these sort of elements, then you know, we, we kind of need to, to specify this sort of documentation on, on each of the, the various different things. So let's just quickly add an example and then I can run that and, um, and show you what's going on. So we're gonna say the, the ID of the user, uh, is it required? Um, yeah, let's just say it's gonna be required. Minimum value, minimum value is gonna be one. This is just an ID. It's actually just gonna be an auto increment in ID. So not, not such a useful um, bit of help there, but we can kind of see what's going on. Now, if we, we kind of generate our Swagger spec again, and again, I just wanna kind of go over here and then I'm gonna refresh. But you know you can see now that I'm seeing showing this is required. I've got the ID required for the user. You can kind of see that it must be greater than one. I haven't really done a great deal there, but it, it's kind of this. I really like this. This is just free, right? Um, and your users will really love this because you're 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 helping them with the documentation. You know you you don't have to use the the kind of the built-in endpoints for your your swagger docs uh, if you want you can take these swagger yaml files and you could have a redoc site somewhere else you could have central documentation generated for for your company or whatever but uh, i think this is quite nice to bundle this stuff up like this because if you're going to package in a docker container and you've always got that convention of slash docs then for every microservice in your system, every developer knows that they just need to spin up the microservice and hit slash docs to get the um, Swagger redoc documentation. And they can just hit the kind of the, the path of slash swagger.yaml. Um, is exposing the API documentation a security risk? Probably not. I mean, if this is a public API kind of showing what the documentation is, I, I don't think you're really going to be helping anybody. I, I don't believe in security by obfuscation. I think um, security is, is proper security. But, you know, certainly if you've got this in internal, it, it's probably going to be fine from a, from a perspective. Certainly if you have a public API that people are going to be consuming, providing them with Swagger docs, they're probably gonna love you for that because they can literally just throw a code generator at, um, at this endpoint and generate a client. Maybe that's what we'll do midweek. Maybe midweek, what I'm going to show you is how we can actually be the consumer of it. It kind of completes that circle, I think. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Well, we're pretty much done for now. I don't wanna to spend too much more time on this. It, it's kind of just gonna be very much more of the same, but I will complete the, the documentation for this API offline um, and it'll be available at and the GitHub repo. I'm just gonna check this code in right now. So git, uh, let's have a look what we got here. That looks all okay. Git add dot git commit added documentation and I'm just going to push that to the um, the branch episode 7 episode 7 um, well come on oh orig 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 in all the type and mistakes Ivan I tell you this keyboard needs to be replaced. It's probably the keycaps, I bet you. Dodgy keycaps, that's what's going on. But that's there. All of the documentation I've been um, pushing as we kind of go along with, with this stuff to um, to the repo. Oh, so many repos. I've just been working on so much stuff recently. Um, where is it? Where is it? too many repos, but you can find that at the repo here. And then there's the branch for today's code. I'm gonna tidy this up and I'm going to push an update um, right now. 
and we're done. Now, I kind of want to thank you again so much for, for watching. Got the, uh, the funky music going on there. But I really appreciate it. I, uh, I hope you're finding this series useful. And of course, if you are, you know, please like, subscribe. It, uh, it helps me push the content and, and that's, a, that's always a good thing. Share it with your friends. But for now, I want to say goodbye. And I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Midweek. Laters.